Bazinga. 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 For some reason, I never globbed onto the Big Bang Theory when it was shown on UK TV. Probably because I subconsciously connected it to the IT crowd. Now let's see what we have here. Stand upright. Now I can't read it. And that show I really couldn't get into at the time. However, many years after it had finished, my son, this guy... What? ...developed a habit of watching clips from the show on his tablet at high volume and they piqued my interest. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but at least he wasn't watching clips of grown men screaming into their microphones while playing Minecraft. So naturally, I started to show more of an interest. And while it's not the best thing ever put on TV, it's damned entertaining. And as I'm a heart on my sleeve geek myself, I found myself relating to some of the characters and getting invested in their stories. Of course, there were a few more elements that managed to drag me away from GTA 5, but the less said about that, the better, especially if the kids are watching. But I'm not really here to talk about Big Bang Theory. I'm more interested in what happens in this scene. Amy ruined Raiders of the Lost Ark for me. So now I'm trying to find something beloved to her and ruin that. <laughs> how, can, how can anyone ruin Raiders? It's perfect. Yeah, except for the fact that Indiana Jones is completely irrelevant to the story. Yet with or without him, the Nazis find the Ark, open it, and die. Now, this isn't really a new idea. I seem to recall having a conversation along these lines with some like-minded chums after Simon Pegg mentioned this little quirk in an episode of Spaced. While that theory is perfect, mainly because it was written by Edgar Wright, who retweeted me once, but I don't like to talk about it, The Raiders theory is a little less than perfect, because while the premise has some credibility, if you look into it a little bit deeper than these guys did over lunch, Indy was absolutely crucial to the events of the movie as they played out. But also, if this was a true story, he may have actually been directly responsible for... Well, I'll get to that. So anyway, the theory goes like this. If Indy hadn't been approached by Porkins, he wouldn't have gone to Tibet. Major Tote would have got there first and would have got the medallion, probably killing Marion for good measure, and would have found the Ark straight away, opening it and killing everyone assembled who wasn't asleep or wearing a blindfold. As the movie plays out, the Germans do get the Ark in the end. Indy just slows that process, meaning the end result would be the same if Indy was there or not. While this is a very plausible chain of events, Indy throwing a spanner into the works means that several elements have changed in quite drastic ways, and the fate of the bad guys is also vastly different. Firstly, no dead Marion, and we needed her to survive so she could drive the car in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, so there's one right out of the gate. Plus, if there was no Marion, there would be no Shia LaBeouf swinging with the monkeys. The difference is what happens to the Ark after it's lifted out of the Well of Souls, and it all hinges around the fate of this BV-38 flying wing. Dietrich is very nervous around the Ark and wants to get the hell out of Dodge as soon as possible. The plan is to load the Ark onto the plane and fly it directly to Berlin. We're going to fly it out of here. Unfortunately, Marion gets locked into the rear gunner's pod, and while India's getting into fisticuffs with Pat Roach, she fires a machine gun, murdering several people and making the fuel truck get all kablooey. After Pat's got squished by the propeller and Indy manages to free Marion, the plane also gets exploded. It's because of this that the Ark is loaded onto the truck instead of the plane. Dietrich mentions that they'll take it to Cairo and load it onto another plane there, so the plan all along was to fly it out of Egypt. But this is the big turning point because if Indy hadn't gone to Tibet, saved Marion and the medallion, found the Well of Souls first, got the Ark first, got trapped in the Well of Souls, figured out how to escape, then escaped, he wouldn't have come out in close proximity to the plane and blowed it all up. Thanks to Indy's actions, aided by the lovely Miss Ravenwood and a machine gun, Indy steals the Ark for a second time and is loaded onto Kingsley Shacklebolt's ship for a slower and more indirect journey by sea. It's only after they're intercepted and Katanga manages to convince the Germans that Indy's dead that the opportunity is made to sail to the island, which very likely doesn't have any kind of runway. This is where Bullock can act out his desire to check the contents of the Ark before it reaches Berlin, and to make sure the Fuhrer isn't disappointed if they get there and it's empty, but more likely due to his desire to be the first person to handle the original Ten Commandments since Moses put them in there. 
As a side note, UK TV used to have a habit of showing this final scene unedited in the late afternoon. My brother would always tell me to hide my young eyes during the scene as he knew I would freak out, then let me know when the horribleness was over. Mind you, in retrospect, I maybe should have covered my ears as well. Don't look around! Keep your eyes shut! Yeah, I think that may have been worse, but at least I turned out okay. So in fact, because of Indy's actions, the Ark wasn't thrown directly to Berlin, where it was entirely possible that opening it somewhere like this might have actually stopped that whole messy world war before it started. Yeah, thanks Indy. <laughs>